past. Motions. Five proposed resolutions under Section 34.2 of the Interpretation General Clauses Ordinance to amend the Smoking Public Health Notices Amendment Order 2017. Members who wish to speak on the five motions will please press the Request to Speak button. The Secretary for Food and Health and Dr. Honorable Fernando Zhang have given notice to respectively move a proposed resolution to amend the order. Honorable Siu Kaofai has also given notice to move three proposed resolutions to amend the order. This Council will proceed to a joint debate on the five motions and then the voting. The purposes of the de and the debate and voting arrangements of the motions are set out in the appendix to the script. I will first call upon the Secretary for Food and Health to speak and move the motion, and then call upon Honorable Siu Kaofai and Dr. Honorable Fernando Zhang to speak, but they may not move the motions at this stage. Upon the conclusion of the debate, this Council will first vote on the Secretary's motion. Irrespective of whether the Secretary's motion is passed or not, Honorable Siu Kaofai may move his first motion. As Honorable Siu Kaofai's and Dr. Honorable Fernando Zheng's motions are interrelated, subject to the result of the voting on Honorable Siu Kaofai's first motion, Dr. Honorable Fernando Zheng may be called upon to move his motion, and Honorable Siu Kaofai may be called upon to move his other two motions. The joint debate now begins. I call upon the Secretary for Food and Health to speak and move the motion. President, the Food and Health Bureau on the 26th of April 2017 introduced the Smoking Public Health Notices Amendment Order 2017 so as to amend um, CAP 371B um, of the Smoking Public Health um, Notices uh, Order so as to make provisions in relation to the um, prescribed form of the health warning on packets and retail container of tobacco products as well as the tar and nicotine use. I urge members uh, I would like to move the motion to amend um, the order. Uh, on the 18th of May 2017, uh, 2015, um, we proposed the legislative amendments to the Health Services Panel of the LegCo, who have been attending different meetings since then and meeting with different deputations, including the industry, so as to strike, um, so as to deal with the details. On the 6th of uh, July 2015, we attended a special meeting of the Health Services Panel. We met with about 100 deputations. On the, um, in May 2016, we wrote to the industry to propose the details. In November 2016, we gave a briefing to the um, industry in relation to the technical and implementation details. Later on, on the 19th of December 2016, 17th of January, 28th of February, and 20th of March, March 2017, when we had the um, Health Services Panel meetings, we reported the progress and we met with 70 deputations. And the subcommittee held five meetings and talked about the policy objectives and the provisions. There was a public hearing. 100 uh, deputations and individuals were received. I'm grateful to the um, subcommittee as well as deputations and individuals who have taken part in the discussion. The subcommittee has come up with uh, suggestions and recommendations concerning the health warnings on the um, tobacco uh, product uh, packages. After careful consideration, we have come up with some amendments and we have secured the support of the subcommittee. I would like to brief you on the uh, proposals. Currently, we have got a uh, soft pack of tobacco pro uh, packages uh, with transparent seals. In the light of the advice of the subcommittee and without jeopardizing the content of the health warnings, we have come up with some technical amendments and we have prepared a specific set of requirements in relation to health uh, warnings concerning uh, soft packs with seals. We have also provided for the size and positioning restrictions of this uh, prescribed seal. 
the seal must be attached to the top part of the two surfaces carrying the head warning as well as the top part um, adjoining the two surfaces. The uh, details are set out in um, paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 of the resolution. In addition, in the light of members' concerns, we have additionally provided a additional set of healthcare images which are in the landscape provision, uh, position so to cater for the different designs of the retail uh, containers and you'll find it in paragraph 7 of our resolution. As to the um, adaptation period, uh, we would like to Extend it uh, by two months. That is, uh, instead of 21st of uh, October 2017, it would now read the 21st of December 2017, um, on which date we allow um, tobacco products carrying the present form or the new form of health warnings to be sold. And then um, from 21st of April 2018 onwards, tobacco products put to sale in Hong Kong should only carry the new form of um, health warnings. That was the original proposal. Now it will be changed to the 21st of June 2018. And um, there will be full 12 months huh, for the industry to adapt to the changes. You'll find the details in paragraph 1 and 6 and paragraph 6 of our resolution. And I would like to uh, respond to members' uh, proposals concerning the coverage of the health warnings. We have been adopting a multi pronged approach and a progressive approach when it comes to tobacco control. Um, we would like to see that the coverage uh, being increased from 50% to 85% in relation to the health warning on the packets or the retail containers of the tobacco products. This has been decided by taking into consideration the local uh, circumstances as well as the aspirations of the public to enhance the control since 2007. And we would like to update and enlarge the health warning so as to keep the deterrent effect and to enhance the effects. International experience and evidence have shown that the larger the size of the health warning image, the more effective it will be. In many countries, it has been said that many smokers has, have indicated that they have uh, come to know about the health risk by uh, reading the health warnings. Local surveys have also said that um, we let the smokers understand the diseases caused by the um, habits of smoking. In fact, um, in 2016, the WHO has already uh, appealed to all countries to introduce plain packaging. Many more countries are implementing the um, policy or about to do it. We would like to introduce the 85% coverage and we would like to take a look of the local situation before we talk about uh, having plain packaging. For the amendments I'm moving, we have already secured the support of the subcommittee. We are grateful to the Chair, Dr. Kiki Kwok, and other members for their precious comments and advice during the scrutiny of the um, order. I urge members to support our proposals. Thank you. Um, Secretary, please move your motion. Um, I move that my motion is set out in the appendix to the script be passed. The administration would like to move some amendments to the amendment order. I now put the question to you that the motion moved by the Secretary for Food and Health be passed. Mr. Peter Chiu, thank you. The Liberal Party is against smoking. The less smokers we have, the better. Smoking affects health. And this is something um, everyone should know. I'm making amendments, but um, unless the SAR government imposes a total ban against cigarettes, the public should have um, a choice. Smoking is harmful to health. This is something everyone should know. But if they choose to smoke, um, they might do it out of different reasons. In a free society like Hong Kong, we have to respect such free will. In the paper, 
the um, coverage ratio of 50% for the health warnings did not, um, has, has not gone up and the um, images are outdated. In terms of nicotine and tar, well, the um, inclusion of these um, have been covered or, or discussed in the paper. And according to the WHO, they recommend plain packaging. In other words, some um, no logos should be shown. From my understanding of the WHO's recommendations, they have a framework convention on tobacco control or FCTC. And um, according to the FCT FCTC, the um, minimum coverage of health warning is 35 percent, and um, they recommend at least 50 percent. In Hong Kong, we are adopting 50 percent already. The government suggests increasing the ratio to 85 percent. I'm making amendments because I represent the um, retail and wholesale trade, and I, repre I represent one of the um, tobacco associations. And um, the trade told me that if the um, ratio is increased to 85 percent, then um, the logos on the cigarette packs would become very small. And you can see here, if the um, coverage requirement is 85 percent, the logo would end up here in this corner. For cigarette um, sellers, it's it would be um, very difficult for them to um, identify different products. Well, enlarging, well, enlarging the graphic warnings might increase awareness. This is simple logic, but the question is: By what extent should we enlarge the graphic warning? Should it be um, 65, 75, or 90, as Dr. Fernando Chang suggested? Would enlarging the graphic warning stop people from smoking? I think it really depends on the extent. In Europe and U.S., in well, in U.S., they there are no graphic warnings, and um, they only use um, words. As the secretary has said, um, these companies, um, these are American companies, so um, it's not sure whether they are covered. But in the European Union. Their requirement is only 65 percent coverage, so um, this is the only space left. So um, would that be enough in terms of the size of the warning for the 12 um, forms? They have been used for a number of years, and I agree that they should be updated in order to enhance awareness. The trade also agrees with this. The question is whether we need to expand the coverage by uh, so much, which would um, cause the um, products to to be hard to identify. According to the government's papers earlier, in places like Thailand, Indonesia, Nepal, they have adopted 85 percent or above, but in terms of the um, smoking prevalence in Hong Kong, it's 10.5 percent, which is among the lowest in the world. The government cited some examples on um, of countries adopting 85 percent requirement. In Thailand, the um, smoking prevalence is. 21.3 percent in Nepal is 23.2 percent. The government has been telling us that by enlarging the graphic warnings, there would be less smokers, but figures don't lie. So, um, but am I completely against enlarging the warning? The answer is no. Enlarging the warnings would enhance awareness. We are just some. Um, the debate is just on the um, percentage for cigars, 
as I have said to the government earlier, in other countries, even for those adopting plain packaging or 85% graphic warnings, the um, for cigar packaging, the requirement is uh, often lower at 35 or 50 percent. The reason is that cigars are high-end products. And um, cigar manufacturers would introduce um, counterfeit, anti-counterfeit features. And um, I have um, showed members some of those at earlier meetings. And um, if you require um, a ratio of, of 70 percent in front and 100 percent at the back, then um, the, um, the um, anti-counterfeit labels might be covered. I think it's important to um, avoid um, counterfeit cigars. The government cited local statistics or survey results. As I've said earlier, according to the um, Hong Kong Council on Smoking and Health or COSH, according to a study in 2015, the survey was based on the um, coverage of 75 percent. But the um, e eventually the recommendation became 85 percent. So I'd like to know whether there's any link between the survey results and that um, proposal. From 50 to 65 percent, if we reach 65 percent, We will be ranked 13 um, from 57th. If we reach 65 percent, we will be ranked 13th in the world, and it will be um, it will place us among among the top um, regions of the world. And um, if the well, the, the government seems to be. Um, Taking the recommendation of the WHO in increasing the ratio to 85 percent, I've been um, asking the government whether by enlarging the graphic warnings to 85 percent would a lot of smokers stop or quit, but they have not been able to provide correct statistics to the public. So by by logic, the larger the warnings, the lower the smoking rate. How do we um, strike a balance between the trade and public health? So this is the work of legislators and the government. In the paper, well, we have um, had a number of meetings at the um, subcommittee. A lot of members of the public have offered their views, and sometimes the views are 50-50, but we saw the same people over and over, and um, we have not heard much from ordinary citizens. So um, we took in views from two opposite um, groups of stakeholders, but um, we cannot say either side's wrong, because the public should have the right to speak out. The focus of the government is on the uh, nicotine and tar yield. The WHO recommends removing the message on nicotine and tar because the yield of these two substances um, have no direct correlation with the chance of contracting cancers. This is the an observation from the WHO. So um, the um, nic nicotine yield might mislead the public, so it's wrong to include that message. That's why we have been requesting the removal of this message. But um, the government tends to follow the WHO's recommendations, but at the end they did not heed the advice. Hong Kong's smoking rate is only 10 percent, 90 percent are non-smokers, so the non-smokers are certainly a majority. I suggested other amendments 
during subcommittee meetings, including the um, labels on the soft packs. If the labels are not exempted, then um, the um, cigarettes would be all over the place in terms of the adaptation period of 12 months. Last time when you raised the ratio to 50%, you offered 12 months, but this time the adaptation period is less. And in terms of the um, size of the packs, I'd like to thank the government for listening to the stakeholders. They do not want to shrink the um, size of the graphic warnings. It's because they it's just not pos not feasible for them. They requested a 12 month adaptation period because they need to reprint all the packages and time would be needed. And the government has agreed. And um, that's why I withdrew my amendments because the government agreed to my views. And um, for th these three amendments, they are about the um, size of the um, cigarette and cigar packs. My colleagues told me that my resolution would be vetoed, but um, I have to. But nonetheless, I still have to speak out for the trade. If you ask me, eighty-five percent or eighty-four, eighty-three percent. If it's just a, a difference of a few points, would it really deter people from smoking? This is a big question mark. But I still insisted. Well, this is how the cigarette packs will look like. The um, um, the only. Uh, a little bit of space would be left in Europe. In some cases, well, in some EU cases, um, the um, the matters have been taken to the courts. The EU felt that the um, graphic warnings could, should not exceed sixty percent. Otherwise, it's an infringement of intellectual property rights. So um, the government is insisting on 85%, and from his viewpoint, he feels that 90% would be even better. So um, would a lot um, would people um, decide not to smoke because the um, warning is enlarged by another 5%? So that's all. Thank you very much. Dr. Fernando Zhang. Thank you, Mr. President. Here we are talking about the coverage of the graphic health warning on the packets or retail containers of tobacco products. Um, the government proposes 85%. I would like to move it to 90%. Honorable Sue Kafai doesn't want eighty five percent and he would like to lower it to sixty five percent. I think arguments like this on the rate of coverage isn't quite meaningful. Smoking jeopardizes your health, smoking is bad and smoking will affect not just your own health but also the health of your um friends and people around you, it will also affect the, the environment that you find yourself. So um, we should do our best to discourage smoking. In 2001, Canada was the first country to introduce graphic health warnings to warn against smoking and has been followed by many other countries. We have also been given evidence to show that the larger uh, the uh, warnings, the more effective they are. And it has really driven down the number of smokers. In particular, um, the smoking preference rate among young people. So this is not debatable. Now for the World Health Organization, it says that for the graphic health uh, warnings, um, 
they should be 100%. That would be the ideal case. I had wanted to amend it to be 100%. Um, now we are talking about an amendment order. If we want to have plain packaging or full health warning, um, I've been told that technically speaking, it cannot be achieved. This is because the subcommittee cannot make use of this exercise to turn the packaging into plain packaging. Now, Honorable Siu Kafai has said that it is not possible to turn the coverage from 50% to 85%. But in fact, 100% is, is um, feasible elsewhere in the world. So I cannot understand his logic why 85% uh, is not uh, viable or not feasible. Well, in some countries, this has been purchased. Say, for example, India. India has 85%, so is Thailand, and Nepal, um, 90%. So if you want to know whether it is technically uh, feasible or not, well, I don't think um, it is so impracticable that they can't even sell tobacco products. Of course, that's not the case. I think, um, to me, the best is to introduce plain packaging uh, as early as possible. It was in 2007 that we first introduced the graphic health warnings, and we were the pace sector in Asia. We adopted such an approach to make sure that people would think try twice uh, before they pick up the habit of smoking. We hope that by um, showing the images, uh, we can send out the message so that the prospective smoker will reconsider whether he or she would like to take up smoking. But then we are lagging far behind. Among the 100 or so countries, when it comes to the health warnings, we are now ranking at 72. This is because for many years we haven't made any changes. We're still keeping the coverage rate at 50%, and we're still having the same images that we adopted 10 years ago. And we have a smaller variety. We've only got six different versions. Today, we welcome the amendments. But in fact, they were first proposed in 2015, and it took a year to two's time to finish the discussion. Even if we are to endorse the amendments today, there will still be a full year's time for uh, the purpose of a grace period. Well, the harm of smoking is known to us, and yet it seems that we are taking a very tolerant uh, view. Doctor, uh, I mean, Honorable Siu Kafei talked about giving a choice to the people. Uh, we spent so much time on the discussion. Now, if you talk about the right to choose, but then we have to pay a price for it, and it is costly. Have we conducted any research to find out um, what is the price that we have been paying? I think uh, we have got some evidence. In the year 2005, uh, the Medical School of Hong Kong U published a report telling us that the economic loss that we suffered as a result of smoking uh, was as much as $5 billion. It was said that between 2000 and 2004, they carried out a four-year-long assessment of the harm done by smoking, covering both uh, primary as well as secondary or second-hand smoking. So what they did was they looked at the number of premature deaths. It was pointed out that in 1998, um, there were 6,920 cases of death arising from smoking or secondary 
um, smoking. And um, three to four thousand of them were cases of premature death, and then nineteen percent of the victims uh, were uh, sufferers of uh, secondhand smoking. And then the loss of productivity was one point four billion dollars, and four hundred million dollars arising from taking sick leave, um, clinical uh, attendance, or um, chronic illness uh, implications. Uh, have resulted in a loss of um, $2.6 billion and $900 million, respectively. And that's why the figure of $5 billion was given in the 2005 uh, report. In 2011, Hong Kong U published another uh, report uh, telling us about the findings of the 10-year-long tracking uh, survey. Well, smoking has greatly uh, aggravated the risk of death in relation to elders. For those aged between 65 and 84, one out of three actually died from smoking. In other words, they died from lung de cancer or cardiovascular uh, diseases or co coronary um, diseases. And then they looked at the figures from the 18 district elderly health centers. And in 2012, it was found that um, the case had worsened. For those aged 65 or above, one out of two died from smoking-related diseases. For those aged 85 or above, one out of four died um, because of a uh, disease related to smoking. In 2015, CEO Hong Kong carried out a survey concerning the economic loss arising from smoking. It isn't just about the medical bill or the loss of productivity. Rather, the CEO Hong Kong looked at the personal loss suffered by the smoker himself. It was found that for a smoker who smoked daily, it was um, believed that if a smoker smoked one packet of cigarettes a day, then he would be spending $1.14 million throughout his life to buy cigarettes. For the economic loss to be suffered, it would reach $11.3 billion. I didn't make up the figure. If you go to the website of CEO Hong Kong, um, there was a press release dated 27th of May 2015. Um, many citizens were interviewed, and they also looked at the average amount of expenditure of the smokers. And it was found that uh, smokers spent on average $20,000 a year on uh, tobacco products. They have the ISPOR approach, uh, assuming that a smoker starts uh, smoking at the age of 18, and then had he spent the money on cigarettes on other investment items, then by the time he retires, he will get $4.71 million. And uh, if um, it is a matter of three packets of cigarettes a day, starting from age of 18, by the time of age 60, um, he would have saved uh, $14.1 million had he not smoked. So we're talking about the case in 2015. The property prices, of course, have gone up. Uh, it was found that for the same amount of money, uh, the smoker could have bought um, a flat in the new territories with a, a, an area of 400 square uh, foot. I know that the figures have been um, sort of um, given by CEO Hong Kong. I, I want to talk about the question of the right to choose mentioned by Dr. Uh, Honorable Siu Kao Fei. Um, well, an individual has to spend money on buying cigarettes, and that's an economic uh, loss. And then there will be premature death, so his health will be harmed. And then it has an impact on people around him and in the society as a whole. 
uh, will suffer from loss of productivity, and then we have to pay for the medical bill. In year 2005, it was found that the price would be $5 billion. In 2015, uh, Siu Hong Kong believed that the price uh, would have been $11.3 billion. Uh, who should pay for this? Now, does it mean that we should sacrifice just because others would like to exercise the right to choose? It isn't just about money, it is also about health. Why should we be made to suffer from passive smoking? Our health would also be jeopardized. Now, the WHO has already promoted plain packaging. Now, in fact, in 2012, Australia has implemented plain packaging. The UK and France had also introduced 100% coverage in 2016. Hungary will do so in 2018. Another 14 countries would like to rely on legislative or other approaches to introduce plain packaging. Uh, Ireland, New Zealand, Norway, Norway um, Slovenia, uh, Belgium, Spain, Finland, uh, Chile and South Africa. For such countries, they are going to um, be more advanced in terms of tobacco control. Uh, we need another to wait for another year before we get this done. We always want the health warnings to be uh, as large as possible. We would like to warn the young people. I think we should go to the extreme. Why shouldn't? We and why can't we hit the core of the WHO? But of course, um, I've been restricted in my amendments. I can only um, do what I am permitted to do within the rules and um, uh, procedures. Now, others have been able to achieve plain packaging. Uh, the wording is clear and also. Um, the health warning has also given a telephone number for those who would like to quit. So it's a very clear message. And then for the brand names, you have a standard for that. Then the positioning would also be prescribed. So irrespective of the brands involved, the brand name would always appear in the same position. It is easy, simple. We do need a scientist to um, purchase our calculus before we can do it. I think we are being too slow, but then I cannot um, move any amendments to achieve 100%, so I can only uh, uh, propose 90%. Thank you. Dr. K.K. Kwok. President, as the chairman of the subcommittee on smoking public health notices order, i like to report the work of the subcommittee. The subcommittee held a total of five meetings, and we also received deputations and individuals. Our discussion concentrated on the area of coverage um, of the health warning on cigarette packets and retail containers. Some members were concerned that if the cover coverage of the health warning would be increased to 85% from just 50% on the two largest services. This might reduce the area for showing the trademark and the brand, and so that there would be more rampant trading in counterfeit tobacco products and illicit cigarettes. They are also concerned about um, the marginal effect that can be achieved in reducing the smoking population. There are other members who support the legislative proposal. They think that by increasing the coverage of the health warning on packaging, it can deepen people's awareness of the evils of smoking. They ask the administration to implement plain packaging as much as, as soon as possible to reduce the temptation of smoking. Some members have said that uh, there would have to be the affixing of seals on the top part of the two largest surfaces and the surface that adjoins the top of these two surfaces on soft pack cigarette packets. By doing so, there may be the obscuring of the top part of the health warning. But then the industry will not be able to 
convert the packaging within the adaptation period, they are of the view that the order should be amended in order to meet the concerns of the industry. The administration has a view that this is not an insurmountable, insurmountable hurdle for the industry, but there will be um, a CSA so that there will be a new version of the prescribed um, seal and uh, also there would be a difference in the size and positioning restrictions for the specified seal. Some members are concerned that local agents have to manually affix the health warning on re retail containers of cigar cigars and therefore it is not possible to exactly cover 100% of the back of the container for cigarettes, um, and I'm talking about the English version of the health warning, so that there must be some slight deviation. Some of the members are of the view that since uh, the container for cigars is much bigger than those for cigarettes, the Chinese version should uh, cover the front and uh, it should only occupy 60 percent. And other members are of the view that the health warning images which are of portrait orientation if they are printed on horizontal packaging of cigars, cigarettes, pipe tobacco and cigarette tobacco, there would be a highly distorted situation and they showed concern about this. The administration will move CSA to provide a landscape orientation of the new form of health warning. And other members are saying that there must be enough time for traders to amend the existing packaging so that they have time to sell the existing stock. The administration will move SCSA to say that within um, the period from the 21st of December 2017 to the 20th of June 2018, both days included, the administration would allow the tobacco products with the new or the existing health warning to be sold. This is what I'd like to report on the work of the subcommittee. Now I would speak on my own views. The administration has always said that a low smoking rate is the evidence of the success of their tobacco control measures. Is that the case? Well, as the chairman of the subcommittee on the smoking public health notices order 2017, I have a very mixed feelings about this. I think you have only marked time in terms of your tobacco control policy. You should not be complacent, even if the smoking rate is not high. Looking in at Hong Kong, the overall smoking rate is 10.5 percent. Compared to the 1980s, 40 uh, percent of Hong Kong people were smokers. Now, of course, the rate is lower, but if you look at the genders, the uh, males are still having an 18.6 percent of uh, the smoking rate, one in five, that is, and for ladies, it is 3.2 percent. But you must understand that the smoking rate for women is rising from 1990, 2.6 percent, 2005, 4 percent, and now 3.2 percent, which is still higher than the 2.2 percent in 1990. Is there a blind spot in your tobacco control policy? Well, it would be too arbitrary if you only look at the women smoking population. But then there are 2.8 percent of primary students who have smoked. Uh, this is shocking. I'm talking about primary four students. They took the first puff in primary four. The most important thing of our tobacco control policy is to prevent young people from taking the first first puff. Prevention is better than cure. It is common sense. But if primary students are affected by the evils of smoking, I would question whether it is good enough in order to make small amendments to the law and just expand the coverage of the health warnings on cigarette packaging. Your policy is promoted by the smoking um, the Council on Smoking and Health, and they are responsible for launching promotional activities. But you can see that in the past decade or so, they have just marked time. For example, they issue pamphlets, they organize carnivals or exhibitions. But if you look at the tobacco companies who are very um, wealthy and professional in doing their publicity campaigns, I don't think you can match up. In Hong Kong, 
the company that owns Dunhill, Lockheed, and uh, Kent, and I'm talking about the British American Tobacco Company. In 2016, they had an, a revenue of 14 billion um, sterling pounds, meaning their profit uh, is standing at 40 percent. Such a profitable business. The tobacco companies, of course, would be plowing money into their publicity campaigns. Of course, the administration um, doesn't allow any two-dimensional or TV advertisements on cigarettes, but you can see that they are using soft paddling. You can watch films and you know um, actors and actresses would be holding cigarettes in their hands. But if you look at the Hong Kong Council on Smoking and Health, Apart from using APIs, has it thought of engaging professional advertising companies in order to mount anti-smoking campaigns? I'd like to talk about whether the administration has plowed in enough resources. The tobacco duty you receive is over $40 billion, but don't be too happy. And I'm talking about $4 billion. According to the Hong Kong U Public Health College survey, every year the loss in um, expenses on medical and social welfare arising from primary and secondary smoking would amount to $5.3 billion. And as you know, many of those who are sitting here and who are um, defending the case of the tobacco companies may not see this. Go to hospital wards. Um, it is indescribable how people are suffering. They are not very old, but their lungs do not allow them to take two more steps. They have to carry uh, a breathalyzer at home, and they can't go out for more than five to ten minutes before they have to return home. They are always coughing up phlegm. They have lost their ability to work, and their family life and their social life is also affected. Tobacco companies have huge capacity. And remember, about 10 years ago, we banned indoor smoking. And we started to print warnings on packages. At that time, uh, there was huge resistance from the tobacco companies. And we are seeing that again. In the entire process of the scrutiny of the order, we could see how the tobacco companies mobilized. The political parties or individuals or deputations to speak up on their behalf. As the chairman of the subcommittee, I, of course, would like this smoking public health notices order to be endorsed so the law can protect the majority of the public from the evils of smoking. But even if the order is carried, does it mean that we have won the war against smoking? I'm not that optimistic because we can see that the smoking rate for men and young people is stagnant, meaning even if we are working on anti-smoking initiatives, there are newcomers joining the group of people who smoke. So if you think you can achieve your objective of controlling smoking uh, just by these amendments, you are too naive. We are facing opponents who are pulling out all stops in order to fight back. Even if you ban all the advertisements, they can go for soft peddling. So young people will still be tempted to think that they are trendy and stylish by holding a cigarette in their hands. Of course, they may be rebellious. And they may think that they represent the new generation of young people. So even 
um, after the order is passed, I hope you will increase resources to help people quit smoking and encourage people to quit smoking. You should be more proactive in mounting anti-smoking activities. You should not just do what you have always been doing. We understand the Hong Kong Council on Smoking and Health doesn't have enough resources. And we don't think it can carry out more effective anti-smoking strategies. And you cannot just rely on your old ways. I hope the $4 billion you get in tobacco levy every year, you should plow in a much bigger amount on quitting smoking um, at the hospital authority and Department of Health and NGOs. You are spending a lot of money to help people quit smoking. But compared to the kind of penetrating uh, promotional efforts of the tobacco companies, I don't think you can match up with them. I hope we can also achieve some progress uh, by increasing tobacco duty. It's still lower than 70 percent. And compared to the WHO guideline, you are still a distance of our Objective is that the tobacco duty should be around 85% of the price of tobacco. So it is less tempting for young people. Also, in future, if you have new resources, you should assign much more for smoking cessation. You should also progress with the times. You should engage professionals or consultants to help you do your work. Lastly, um, about the amendment this time around, I support Dr. Fernando Jung's proposal. Of course, there are still constraints. He said he would like to go for plain packaging the administration has told us that this is the long-term objective. But your long-term objective doesn't have a timetable. There is no route map either. I'm just worried that we have to wait another 10 years before we can have plain packaging for cigarettes. I understand, Mr. Shukafa, you are working hard to speak on behalf of the trade. But unfortunately, you are going in the opposite direction of plain packaging. I cannot possibly support you. Please stop speaking. Thank you. Mr. Wang Ting Kwong. Thank you. President, before I speak, I need to declare interest. I have smoked for over 40 years. This smoking public health notices order 2017 is related to cigarettes, of course, but I I don't think I have direct or indirect pecuniary interest uh, that is involved, so I can will continue to speak and vote on it. The Smoking Public Health Notices Order 2017 aims to increase the coverage of the health warning on cigarettes and cigar packaging. For cigarettes, um, now it is more than 50% on the front and back of packaging. It will be increased to 85% on both surfaces. For cigars, it is from more than 50% on the front and back of packaging. Now it is 70% on the front and 100% on the back. And now there are 12 graphic health warnings instead of just six that we now have. The administration has made proposals to increase the graphic health warnings and has proposed to increase the coverage of graphic health warnings on the packaging. Of course, the aim is to reduce the public's desire to buy tobacco products so as to make tobacco control more effective. To me, 
increasing the coverage of graphic health warning and also adding to the number of graphic health warnings, well, I don't think it will have any effect on me. Whether or not I will continue to buy tobacco products. But if the SARG is of the view that the relevant measures can reduce the desire of young people to buy tobacco products so as to reduce the young people's smoking rate and so as to limit the growth of the number of new smokers, I will not object to that. Having said that, when you roll out new tobacco control policies, you must be sure that you are achieving the purposes of the policy and you must also remember whether it is technically possible for tobacco companies to comply with the new proposals. And uh, in this regard, I believe to a certain extent you have struck a balance this time around. You have said that uh, you will increase the graphic of health warning coverage. The tobacco industry has the following difficulties. For soft pack cigarette packets, um, the seals will obscure the top part of the health warning graphic. So they will not be able to achieve the law requirement that the graphic health warning should cover 85% of the two largest services on the package. And for cigars, and if the graphic health warning on the back must cover 100%, and then in actual operation, it is quite difficult to have the graphic health warning exactly covering 100% of the container because it is going to be done manually and there may not be exact um, matching of the warning and the back cover of the cigar box. And the industry has also said that um, the adaptation period this time around is less than 12 months and that is going to make life difficult for them. First of all, for soft pack cigarette packets, the seals will have to be affixed to the top part of the two larger surfaces so that um, cigarettes will not fall from the area near the lid. Therefore, there must be the seals. But then, they may obscure the top part of the graphic health warning. And the SARG is asking that the graphic health warnings must cover 85% for cigarette packets. And uh, it, it may be difficult um, in for implementation. And the administration has said that Transparent seals have been adopted in overseas countries for soft pack cigarette packets and it is of the view that Hong Kong can follow suit. That is to make use of transparent seals to replace existing seals. But then soft packs sold in Hong Kong only take up a small market share and the main producer doesn't have the production machinery that will allow the use of transparent seals. So they may not be able to comply within 12 months, and that is they may have to replace their production plant. And in fact, replacing the production plant is not cost effective for them. The order requires that on the back of cigar boxes, the graphic health warning must cover 100% of the surface so that upon import, the importer will have to affix the graphic health warning locally. And in actual implementation, it is very difficult to guarantee that the manual sticking of the graphic health warning would exactly cover 100% of the back of the cigar box. So Mr. Shukafai is making an amendment saying that 
the graphic health warning should cover only 65% of both services. And this will resolve the problem of soft packs and the cigar boxes. Now, of course, Mr. Fernando Zheng is of the view that the coverage is not enough as proposed. And he is proposing that the graphic health warning should be expanded to 90% on both surfaces. For the tobacco industry, they are facing difficulties. And during the scrutiny period, I have taken up those with the SARG time and again. I have talked about the industry's worries and difficulties. So at the same time, when you propose to increase the area of graphic health warnings, you really have to help the industry resolve the problems in complying with the new requirements so that you can strike a balance between increasing tobacco control and the actual implementation for the industry. And the SARG gave very detailed consideration to my view, and they are going to move CSAs. If the uh, seal of soft pack cigarette packets do not exceed 23 mm in width and 14 mm in length, it would be exempted. And also, the adaptation period would be changed from the 21st of April this year to the 21st of April next year to the commencement date of the order. And that is from the 21st of June this year to the 21st of June next year. And it is also promised that if the importer of cigars do not deliberately violate the order, and if there is just slight deviation in terms of implementation, so that there is not exact cover, cover, cover of uh, the back of cigar boxes, the enforcement agencies will not take our prosecution lightly. I subscribe to these CSAs because the administration will be exempting the seals for soft pack cigarette packets. So the problem for soft pack cigarette producers' problems are resolved. And uh, it will not reduce the effectiveness of the new health warnings. I think it is a win-win situation. What is more important is that the adaptation period would now count from the endorsement of the order instead of the uh, gazetto of the notice. The producers, the distributors and retailers, including stores and newspaper vendors, they will all have enough time to exhaust their existing stock. So they will not break the law before the adaptation period is over. And so they will not suffer any losses. All these considerations of the SARG can strike a balance between increasing tobacco control policies and the actual implementation of the industry. I think this is very pragmatic and it should worth our support. I hope other departments of SARG, when they are going to propose new legislative control or policies, no matter how lofty these ideals are, you must be mindful of those who are affected and the problems faced by industries. We must try to have a win-win situation. So I speak, President, DAB and myself, support the CSAs of the administration and will object to CSAs by members. Mr. Ted Hoi. Thank you. The Democratic Party supports the government's tobacco control work and relevant reinforcements. Smoking is a very personal choice and um, the public knows the pros and cons very well. Even though smoking is a personal choice, the health of non-smokers would also be affected. 
a lot of people know that secondhand smoke is more harmful to health than firsthand smoke. Smoking also affects children, and um, our future generations might pick up the habit. And um, they might be influenced by their family members, and all these are backed up by statistics. So um, this led to the question whether the government is doing a good job in tobacco control. The government suggests enlarging the graphic health warnings on the packs to 85%. This would um, have an impact on our teenagers and children when they see the cigarette packs of their family members, when they visit, when they um, pass by newspaper vendors and convenience stores, their impression on smoking would change. But having said that, we still need to respect smokers in a free society. Well, as we, as I said, smoking is a very personal choice. Even though there are harms to smoking, there is no need to stigmatize or label smokers. There is no need to label smoking as immoral. There is no need to go as far as saying that smoking is wrong. But the fact is, um, there is no absolute um, right and wrong in smokers and non-smokers. I have. Um, some friends who I describe as civilized smokers, they would try to be considerate to others, and um, they might consider whether they are affecting other people or, or other passengers waiting at the bus stop. So um, this is based on mutual respect between smokers and non-smokers. We feel that smokers can live in harmony with non-smokers. The Democratic Party supports the government's proposal to enlarge the graphic warnings to 85 percent on cigarette packs, and um, this would be in line with the WHO's guidelines. Even though um, there is some opposition from the trade, the proposal has been discussed in length as well as being um, consulted upon. Some members, including Mr. Peter Chu, suggested um, lowering the um, requirement to 65 percent. I think um, this is against the government's intention to enhance tobacco control, so um, it would be hard for the DP to support his proposal. Dr. Fernando Cheng asked whether the um, graphic warnings can be increased from 85 percent to 90 percent. So um, the question is, are we going to um, adopt plain packaging in our tobacco packs? We had lengthy discussions at subcommittee meetings, and the government showed us different examples from around the world. And we can see that um, it's becoming a trend to adopt plain packaging. And personally, I also support plain packaging because it has its benefits. And um, we can benefit children and the smokers themselves. Having said that, we feel that adopting plain packaging would be uh, another step forward, and hopefully the government can carry out extensive consultation and studies on this. But um, for this amendment order, We have not consulted the trade on the, uh, the adoption of 90 percent coverage or plain packaging. That's why the DP feels that the 85 percent ratio proposed by the government is more appropriate. With the um, based on the above justifications, we will vote in support of the government's proposal. 
and we will not support other amendments moved by members. We hope the government realizes that if we are to enhance tobacco control in our society in terms of legislation or in our society, there is work to be done. After the um, amendment audits pass, hopefully the work can continue, for example, um, including efforts against e-cigarettes. E-cigarettes affect our young children and teenagers, and um, the um, repercussions will, uh, are even more serious. But the government has not conducted any public consultation we have not seen any um, substantial studies from the government. We need to enhance tobacco control in our society. A lot of people have complained to us that at at footbridges or bus stops, they have been um, bothered by secondhand smoke, and um, there are a lot of such um, complaints. After this amendment order is passed. I hope that the government would enhance its work, and hopefully they can um, strengthen tobacco control for the public. For legislations relating to um, tobacco control, Hong Kong is um, lagging behind other places. Other in um, some jurisdictions, there are um, laws in place against some. Um, or to regulate smoking in restaurants, etc. The um, general awareness is much higher than Hong Kong, and um, in buildings and exits, the um, regulations are also stricter than in Hong Kong. We will support the amendment order and hopefully. will um, come up with more concrete um, promises on tobacco control. Thank you. Honourable Tommy Jung. Madam Deputy, the administration has moved amendments to the ordinance. I'm disappointed. It is biased. The government is dominating and the government won't allow other voices to be heard. The government thinks that it is occupying high moral ground, and so um, there will be sufficient votes, and the government is trying to force it on the industry. The administration has been saying that it has taken into account the actual situation in Hong Kong and that the public have expected an enhancement of the um, Health warnings. I think the government is trying to use the uh, public as an excuse. Should we go to the extreme so that uh, we should increase uh, the coverage drastically from 50% to 85% on the two largest services? It has given rise to concerns about the authenticity seal. I just wonder if the public are in support of that. Even if the majority of them are in support, 90% of the citizens are non-smokers. So whenever they ask whether there should be more uh, stringent um, uh, control, they will of course say yes. In fact, on this occasion, the government has still failed to provide scientific evidence as to how increasing the size of the health warnings can we achieve a higher, if a stronger effect of uh, uh, smoking uh, con control. In fact, our preference rate is low. Uh, in fact, um, only poor uh, African countries have a lower uh, smoking rate because they just can't afford cigarettes. Now, for the uh, harmful effects on our health uh, brought about by smoking, I think we are all aware of them. In fact, um, for both our male and female um, uh, populations, uh, we have been enjoying longevity. I think the crux of the matter is to deal with the rising rate of young smokers. I think we should educate the smokers, the young smokers, that um, it is harmful uh, for their health. 
that's the way forward rather than trying to overtake other countries and try to enlarge the health warnings. The government thinks it will scare away the smokers, but in fact, um, it will be stifling our developments. There are only four countries in the world that have got health warnings taken up 55% or more of the surface area, but then they have a higher smoking rate than Hong Kong. In Thailand and Nepal, their smoking rate is double that in Hong Kong, and their educational standards are different from uh, that in Hong Kong, and information available is also uh, not as prevalent as that in Hong Kong. So the the approach that they've adopted to control tobacco just doesn't apply in Hong Kong. What is worse is that for the WHO, um, the recommendation is that uh, it should occupy 50% or more of the um, principal service. We have already achieved such a target for the UK and European Union countries. Um, they have said that uh, 65 percent should be the coverage rate for the front as well as the back service of the packets. Why haven't we made reference to such? Uh, for those aged 15 or above, um, the prevalence rate of smoking has dropped to 10 percent or so. We have been increasing the tobacco con uh, duty rate all the time, but we haven't seen a drastic drop in the number of smokers. In fact, we have got illicit um, cigarettes, and it is something we can't turn a blind eye to. Now, if we enhance the coverage to 85 percent, it means that manufacturers will find it difficult to show the authenticity seal. In other words, criminals can easily um, offer the authenticity uh, can offer the illicit cigarettes. It is even worse in relation to cigar products. Therefore, in U EU, um, they only need to have. 30% on the front and 40% on the back of the cigar um, containers uh, being uh, devoted uh, to health warnings. In Hong Kong, we don't make reference to their purchase, and in fact, the um, requirement will be so harsh that it will be difficult to attach the authenticity seal, and then it will be easy for the criminals to come up with um, illicit uh, cigars. I need to declare interest. I do smoke cigars, but then cigars will be um, um, selling uh, cigars of different brands uh, to smokers. Um, that's done by salesmen usually, and it is not uncommon for us to see cigars being sold uh, individually. Therefore, the current proposal is not going to be effective. The industry has tried hard to argue their case, but the government has turned a deaf ear. According to 2015 figures, now, 72 million illicit uh, sticks of cigarettes have been seized. In other words, uh, 6 million sticks a month. It is alarming. Well, the customs has only got limited manpower, and in fact, uh, usually um, they will try to do it on a small uh, so, sort of retail scale. So we are only seeing the ice of the um, uh, the tip of the iceberg. And I think the sale of illicit cigarettes may also give rise to the involvement of young uh, criminals. So I think the government has not looked at the question squarely. The government hasn't listened carefully to the views of the industry. The government should have balanced uh, the different interests. I think the government is negligent, but then the public and, uh, do not quite understand the matter, and the legislators um, are sort of um, rendering their support. Maybe the government is trying to be ambitious. I think uh, together with the uh, Council on Smoking and Health, they would like to um, seek the um, approval of the WHO. Well, every time when I travel around, when we know, when, when they know that um, we have also introduced the indoor smoking ban, they were interested to find out more from us. Um, 
At that time, um, our uh, smoking rate was only 16%. Uh, the Norwegian um, people found it uh, strange that we were still trying hard to drive down the smoking rate. They thought that would be good enough a rate. Now, in Hong Kong, for the past 10 years or so, every one of us would like to uh, be health conscious. The smoking rate has come down to 10%, but still the government would like to work on the health warnings. Therefore, I say that it is uh, disappointing. On this occasion, we can see that the uh, the fault of a democratic society is that if you are the majority, you can um, exercise uh, absolute power. Now, our pan democrats are trying to fight for the interests of the minorities. But when it comes to smoking, the pan democrats have shown their true uh, nature. That is, uh, we have totalitarian rule by the majority. Well, in fact, why don't you introduce a total ban? But the, and in fact, the liberals, uh, like including Tommy Chung, who support your outright uh, ban. It's better to have an outright ban than introduce such unrealistic uh, proposals. Thank you. Dr. Pierre Chen, Madam Deputy, since the 18th of May 2015, when the administration tabled a proposal to amend the smoking public health notice uh, in order to change the specification, the size of the health graphic health warning on tobacco packaging. Well, two years have passed since then. There were six meetings at the health services panel, and we also held a special meeting to receive deputations and individuals. The administration has received over a hundred submissions. On the 28th of April this year, a subcommittee was set up under the House and five meetings were held. Um, the administration has actively responded to questions and proposals from members and others. And some CSAs will be moved. This is the product of um, amicable exchange between the LegCo and the administration. The controversy is on A, uh, the amendment, and that is that the graphic health warning to expand to 85% of the two largest services. Some members wanted more, some members wanted less. But the DAB and the FTU expressed their stance that they would support the CSA of the administration. I believe that CS, uh, the order would be supported by the council in the end. As a doctor, my primary duty is to gatekeep the health of the people and also to cure people who are sick. Tobacco control can also help to prevent diseases relating to smoking. So I support the Smoking Public Health Notices Amendment Order 2017 uh, to enhance the cessation message and also to increase the coverage of the graphic health warnings. I also support Mr. Fernando Jung's proposal that this be amended to 90% so as to show my biggest support for tobacco control. By the same token, I need to object to the CSA of Mr. Shoka Fai. He would like to make an amendment to the government's proposal, and that is to increase it just to 65 percent, 20 percent less than the government's proposal, and also the Retail container for cigars, pipe tobacco, and or c cigarette tobacco. And uh, he is going to move technical amendments to reduce the coverage. And that would uh, detract from the effectiveness of the graphic health warnings. He, uh, Those members who object to the 
proposed increase to 85%. They have asked repeatedly that only Thailand is doing this, and uh, m the majority of advanced Western countries do not require such a big coverage. But they have only told you part of the truth, which is advantageous to their argument. I will tell you the other part. The WHO has advocated plain packaging for cigarettes in recent years. Uh, on the World No Smoking Day, plain packaging was the theme. What is that? Well, it is defined as having the entire packaging that it should be restricted or prohibited to be used as advertising. In other words, apart from the brand name, all the other areas on the packaging would be health warnings or health messages. It's a very harsh measure, but it is the new trend. In 2012, Australia adopted plain packaging, France, UK, Ireland. Also adopted or will adopt plain packaging last year or this year respectively in Norway and New Zealand would do it next year, and then hung Hungary, Turkey, Slovenia, um, they will be adopting plain packaging in the coming years. The same for Canada. If Hong Kong wants to join this world trend, we should take the opportunity this time that we should require tobacco companies to use plain packaging. Now, um, of course, we are having a lot of reaction from this enlargement of the coverage, and I believe the administration has gone for a compro compromise and uh, balancing the tobacco industry's interests. Some people say the 85% coverage would affect the um, labels and also the anti-forgery labels, and also there will be more rampant trading in counterfeit cigarettes and illicit cigarettes. But the administration has said time again that uh, there is no evidence of this. Apart from 85 percent, well, you still have 15 percent, and also on the two sides, you can still exhibit your brand name and the anti-forgery um, features. Therefore, I think this is appropriate and necessary. I'd like to remind the administration that actually, originally, The health warning was not that you should quit smoking for future generations. It was actually that um, if you smoke, you don't have sex. Well, some people say this is too extreme. But in fact, uh, half of the people die prematurely because they smoke. So the original smoking slogan is that if you smoke, you die. And then the Hong Kong U surveyed 60,000 elderly people for 11 years. And the survey findings showed that long-time smokers would die prematurely. Um, that is 50% of them. There are similar surveys overseas, but some had to do with young people, and the premature death rate was 66%. In other words, out of three smokers, two young smokers would die prematurely. Uh, but some people say, don't all people die? Does it have anything to do with smoking? I was saying that the survey told us that out of two smokers, one would die prematurely. This is very important. If you think it is not reasonable, then you should seek a judicial review against that report. But uh, this is evidence-based data. Smoking will lead to lung cancer and uh, other pulmonary diseases and heart disease. And the WHO surveyed the data in 185 countries. The medical expenses relating to smoking related to 400 billion odd US dollars, or 5.7 percent of the world's expenditure on medical services. Secondary smoke will also affect your health. And the Hong Kong U Public Health College did a research from 2000 to 2014, and it showed that diseases arising from smoking and secondary smoke uh, amounted to $5.3 billion, and out of which 
Five seven billion dollars had to do with medical expenses. In other words, the tobacco duty you receive is not enough to balance off the expenses. And in 2015, the Hong Kong CU Medical Faculty released another report、uh, using the Hong Kong U survey as a basis, and it said that in 2015, the academic academic economic loss. From smoking amounted to 11.3 billion dollars. So this is not scaremongering at all. As a matter of fact, you say quit smoking for future generations. This is so modest, so mild. In order that the order will be passed, this is a compromise on the part of the administration. I fully understand. Some members have to speak on behalf of the industry. They are very professional, and they are seeking technical amendments to the order. That、uh, the soft pack,、um, cigarette packaging seals can be exempted,、uh, even if they obscure the top part of the graphic health warning, and also the coverage of eighty-five percent should be. Shrunk, shrunk, and they also questioned the administration for rushing through the order. Well, I wouldn't say this is filibustering, but I hope they will understand that the administration has already responded to the needs of the industry. The adaptation period would be extended from six months after Gazetto to a year after Gazetto. It is not possible to claim that you are effective in tobacco control without reducing the business for tobacco companies, because the objective of your policy is to reduce the smoking population. Now, of course, the tobacco industry is just like any other industry. You want as many as patrons as possible. So there is a contradiction between the industry and smoking. Cessation. If the industry would welcome this order, then it would show that the administration is in trouble. Of course, the interests of the tobacco industry will be harmed by the order. The more effective the measures, the more the interests of tobacco companies will be affected, like tobacco duty. Some members said the administration should give. Due consideration to the livelihood of the practitioners. Now, this is a little strange because we want to control to tobacco, and of course there will be effect on the livelihood of the practitioners. Now, please do not misunderstand me. I am not trying to be an enemy of the tobacco industry. I'm just. Trying to tell you, and I hope you understand that as a doctor, I know exactly the evils of smoking and secondhand smoke. For the sake of public health, I'm of the view that the administration should take further measures to control tobacco. I do hope there will be stable development of Hong Kong's economy, which should be diversified, and we should not rely on the tobacco industry for full employment. Some people say we only have 10.5 percent smoking rate is much lower than in other places, and yet you are proposing to increase the coverage of the health warnings. Well, look, think about 10 percent. We are talking about 600,000 people. If you do something to reduce it by 1 percent, we are talking about 100,000 people. No, sorry, 1 percent. Yes, we are talking about. Meaning, you reduce 10.5 to 9.5 percent. We are talking about over 50,000 people. If you say you do something in order to reduce the smoking population and also the evil of secondhand smoke, you are helping the public. You will be reducing medical expenses. I hope members will seriously consider passing the order. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Ms. Alice Mack. President, the、um, amendments are relating to the、um, display of information on cigarette packs or seals. From a、um, public health perspective, the FTU will generally support the government's 
amendments. Through these amendments, we hope that the society would be more aware of the issue of smoking, and this would um, hopefully benefit public health. In our meetings, Some people said that having 85% coverage might not necessarily be effective. Enlarging the warnings does not mean that people will stop smoking. They said that enlarging the um, warnings would not help, and they asked for scientific evidence. We have been discussing this um, amendment for two years, and I have had the same question with me. If enlarging these health warnings would not deter people from smoking, then what are you worried about? Even if you enlarge the warnings to a, the, the, the coverage ratio to 100%, then you won't be affected. If you believe that um, enlarging the graphic warnings would not mean less smokers, then you would not be affected. But the um, reality is the, the opposite. You realize that enlarging the graphic warnings would deter people from smoking. Well, you said it's useless anyway. If 85% is not effective, why would 100% be? You know, smokers will smoke no matter what, no matter how big or ugly the warnings look like. By the same logic, I think enlarging the health warnings can um, at least stop people from thinking that cigarette packs are appealing or cool. Recently, uh, I saw a pack of cigarettes at home, and uh, I, you know, I found the pack very ugly, and I had to hide it away immediately. You know, I I don't want to be photographed. Uh, you know to um, be in the same picture as a pack of cigarettes. So enlarging the graphic warning would um, deter smokers. And um, we are um, more concerned whether this amendment can stop young people from picking up their first cigarette. You know, if the packs look attractive or cool, then um, they might find it appealing and vice versa. So hopefully this amendment can help. In May 2015 at LegCo, um, this has been discussed at the um, panel on health services. There were three items, one, the health warnings, two, um, the setting up of non-smoking areas at bus stops, and three, e-cigarettes. At the end, um, you we only um, passed the item on the um, non smoke no smoking areas at bus interchanges and for this item it has dragged on for two years. We have had four meetings at the subcommittee on the same issue. So um has there been enough consultation? In May two oh one five I did not believe that there could be um ample consultation. At that time, I wondered why um, the um, tobacco companies tried to lobby with us. What about those um, bodies against smoking? And um, why did you only choose to hear one side of the story? Some parts of the trade said that they haven't been consulted. And at that time, I told the government that if this amendment would affect the trade, we must have ample consultation. And the government explained that um, because of WHO um, requirements, they cannot contact the tobacco companies directly, but the, the public still needs to know the picture. On one hand, you talk about tobacco control, and on the other, you said you understand the operation of the trade. So these seem to be contradictory. You can um, call this a conflict, but I think we are simply trying to strike a balance. If you want to get something through soon, then um, you would want to, you would try to strike a balance to minimize
the impacts on practitioners while um, maximizing the effects of the ordinance. So um, over the past two years, we've been meeting trade representatives to understand the operational issues. And um, one of our members, in a member of one of our unions, said that, um, well, that workers union um, is one of the few unions with manufacturing lines in Hong Kong. So we have to consider the livelihood of practitioners as well. You s you might say that you can you you would ignore them, but this would um, prevent the amendment from being passed. So you can see that it has dragged on for more than two years. So the government must learn a lesson. Before you um, make further amendments in the future, well, some members advocated plain packaging. And if that's the case, then even more consultation must be conducted and more discussions are needed, or else um, we would see a repeat of the same scenario. In the um, government's CSA, they adopted some of our views. So uh, in the past two years, we have certainly made some progress. If you've been um, tracking the progress since 2015, at the beginning, the government was really stubborn. And now, they have um, made compromise on the soft packs and they have made amendments. And, um, they have also adjusted their graphic warnings in order to facilitate the trade. And the adaptation period has also been extended. Hopefully, these can all help the trade in um, adapting to the new requirements. We have always said that tobacco control has many fronts. Health warnings might help, but they are not the only tool. And similarly, raising tobacco duty is not the only means. Different tools are actually available in tobacco control. So um, apart from working on health warnings, the government must work on other areas of tobacco control as well. For issues like secondhand smoke in the workplace, we hope that the government can um, reinforce its efforts. Well, what are you laughing at, Ray Chan? Apart from health warnings, for other areas of tobacco control, including publicity, in particular, um, smoking among young people and women is relatively serious. So um, the government should have measures for young and female young smokers and um, female smokers. I've heard primary school kids picking up the habit. I'm not going to um, use my full time slot, but I'd like to thank the government for making these amendments at this very late stage so that um, practitioners can adapt to the new requirements more easily. Hopefully, the government would reinforce its efforts in tobacco control and the, um, they would not stop here. Thank you. Honorable Ray Chen, thank you, Madam Deputy. Smoking is hazardous to health. I'm sure both adults and children are familiar with this warning. No one objects to it, and not many people would argue about it. Today, um, members from the health sector have also talked about health-related figures. I don't intend to argue against that. My father uh, was a smoker for a few decades, and he died from lung diseases. But does it mean that I won't support 
uh, or does it mean that it would be politically incorrect if I uh, don't uh, support the government's uh, tobacco control measures? Does it mean that whatever proposal comes from the government should have our unanimous support and unconditional support? No, the government has imposed a tobacco duty. The government has enlarged the uh, no smoking area, and today we are here to talk about the enlargement of the size of the health warning on the packets or uh, retail containers. Does it mean the higher the tobacco rate, the better, the larger the no smoking area, the better, and the larger the health warning, the better? Now, the administration would like to see the health warning uh, being sort of uh, accounting for um, 85 percent instead of 50 percent of the surface, thinking that it will lower the number of smokers. I don't think it is realistic. It is not practical, so I'm not going to support. In 1994, that's the first time that the health warning was introduced into the packages. And then uh, in 2007, the graphic uh, health warning was introduced after there was one uh, amendment uh, a few years ago. I don't think we have seen a significant uh, impact on the number of smokers. We see a drop of 0 0.1 percent uh, to 14.8 percent, and in fact, enlarging the health warnings on two occasions. has got the following result. It was 12.4% in 2004. In year 2008, it was 11.8%. 2009 is 12%. The figures have shown that uh, on three occasions, we have enhanced the health warnings, but we haven't increased the rate of increasing the number of non-smokers. In 1994, at that time, the rate was 14.9%. Now it's 10.5%. So a drop of 4.4%, despite the efforts being launched for 10 years or so. Now, I don't think the key to the question is to enlarge the health warning coverage. I don't think the government is justified uh, in saying that uh, by having a larger health warning, um, the effect will be greater. Now, if it is said that um, it won't uh, increase the effect, then there is no need to object to it. Well, I think if we allow the size to increase, it means that the industry will have to increase its business costs. The retailers will also suffer from an increase in the business costs. We don't know whether this will be shifted onto the consumers. It depends on the elasticity of demand. And then for consumers, for smokers, they will be vilified, and then they will have their right to receive information being eroded. Uh, of course, the interests of the industry would not be prevailing, and I'm not speaking on their behalf. If we have a ban on ivory, uh, then uh, the interests of the industry will be secondary. Today, Tommy Jung is saying that either we have an outright ban on smoking, and then it means that we haven't got the industry. We haven't got any industry because for the manufacturers and retailers, etc., they have to... Um, uh, sort of um, uh, changed on the tray. I may have a few sips of red wine. I may try uh, the cigar uh, a couple of times a year, but I don't smoke. I, however, respect others' right to smoke, though I don't smoke myself. When we formulate our policies, we need to be reasonable and fair, and we need to treat all the stakeholders in a fair manner like smokers, manufacturers of tobacco products, as well as the retailers. Today, I want to raise this uh, viewpoint. When it comes to the control of tobacco products and the control of alcohol, I think the government is discriminatory. The government would very much like to develop Hong Kong into a center for red wine, and, and therefore the alcohol uh, duty has been lowered. But then to deal with smoking, the tobacco duty has gone up drastically. Well, 
um, smoking and drinking are equally harmful for our health. Passive smoking will hurt others, and then uh, under the influence of um, alcohol, you may have domestic violence, you may uh, kill others when you drive, and there are also other uh, problems. The social cost to be paid uh, is the same in both the case of smoking and drinking. But then the government is not uh, doing much in, when it comes to the pro problem of um, um, abusing uh, drinking. It is only recently that the government would like to advocate um, uh, that young people should stay away from alcohol. Why, why are you not doing the same in the case of the um, uh, packaging of red wine or whiskies, etc.? Why don't you put on, put in a health warning to say that uh, under the influence of alcohol, you will kill, you can kill others? Today we are not talking about tobacco duty, so I'm not going to talk more about uh, the duty on alcoholic uh, products. When the government has, uh, is, when the government says that the health warning can effectively um, lower the prevalence rate, the government will say that 37 percent of those who are habitual smokers have tried to quit or have um, desired uh, to smoke, uh, to quit. And they would cite the health warnings as an evidence. And then they said that recently, 70% of the citizens and 50% of the smokers are in support of enlarging the coverage of the health warnings to 85%. The question is, you may assume that the figures are correct, but can we really cite that as a rationale to say that larger health warnings can indeed lower the preference rate? I don't think uh, they have actually looked at the behavioral change. They just want to ask the interviewees and ask them to come up with a subjective uh, answer. You ask 10 persons, 10 persons, all of them would say that they would like to quit. But at the end of the day, they have failed and they just resume smoking. Now, smoking is a behavior. Uh, to quit is, uh, well, is a question of whether you have the will to do so. So the government would simply try to measure the subjective desire to quit. Well, it would be politically correct when you are asked and you would say that, yes, I would like to quit and this is the last cigarette I'm going to take. There's no scientific way to make to take the measurements. So I think it is not going to be um, effective. And then what about the long-term effects of the wording of the health warnings? I think you need to have a tracking survey. You need to have longitudinal uh, surveys. You don't know whether the health warnings in the long term can reduce the demand for cigarettes. And in fact, it has been studied it has been found by a study that the plain packaging would only have effect for one week. The government has been telling us that we need to catch up with the international trend. But we have only been told about the example of Thailand and India. It is confusing and mind-boggling. It seems that the government has not um, adhered to the principle of being evidence-based. Now, in the real world, for my friends who are smokers, yes, they will find the uh, graphic health warnings um, disgusting. Uh, they will choose a package which carries a less uh, scaring uh, image. Say, for example, they will stay away from that package which carries an image of impotency. Well, according to the government's proposals, the nicotine and tide use will be printed separately uh, on a surface not carrying the health warning and not affected by the background color. But then for the FCTC of the WHO, according to Article 11 of that framework convention, it is said that party to the convention should not um, talk about nicotine, tar or um, carbon monoxide uh, re, uh, concentrations. I would like to cite um, Article 11 of the Framework Convention. 
um, it is said that party to convention must not ask for the tobacco constituents uh, to be stated on the package because it may imply that a particular brand carries less harm than other brands. Uh, this is in relation to nicotine, tar, and carbon monoxide. Um, well, I think uh, by having such um, uh, information, smokers may have the wrong impression that uh, maybe a brand with a lower tar yield will be less harmful to your health. Well, in fact, um, the nicotine uh, isn't as high as the for a lower tar uh, as brand, uh, the nicotine content may be lower, and people may opt for uh, a higher tar yield instead. I think we need to uh, sort of uh, follow the advice of the WHO. I don't think uh, we should uh, mislead um, the uh, smokers. Well, um, the administration would always try to use the WHO uh, as an authority, but the government would only uh, sort of uh, be selective. Um, but I need to praise the administration because the administration has accepted the views of the industry and some uh, deputations. That is, there's some relaxation about the soft pack. Um, the health warning may be such that um, the seal of the soft pack may um, obscure a part of the health warning, and then the manufacturers or retailers cannot uh, uh, beat the requirements. Now, for this one, it says smoking will result in premature death. Now, for version C, um, it shows the funeral hall. Now, you see that the ceiling of the funeral hall is black, so it doesn't matter if the seal is to obscure that uh, health warning. And then you have the mortuary. The message is uh, smoking kills. Um, again, uh, the part to be obscured uh, doesn't matter. In other words, the size doesn't matter. As long as you can bring out the message, it will be fine. If you are being rigid and ask for the ceiling to be um, sort of extended up to a coverage of 85 percent, or um, and then say, for example, the one showing uh, a damaged foot uh, on the linen on a bed, again, there isn't anything to be obscured. But then today we found ourselves uh, sort of uh, uh, arguing over whether 85 percent should be the right level. Whether we can see the ceiling of the funeral hall may not uh, bring about a stronger message. So by looking into the details, uh, we see that it is self-contradictory. Honourable Sue Cafe would like to uh, move three amendments. Um, He's saying that the government cannot come up with strong evidence to say that enlarging the health warning and and then the number of smokers will reduce. Um, I think along that line, so I'm going to support those uh, amendments. Thank you. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Shoka Fai? Before I ask the Secretary for Food and Health to reply, would you like to speak again? Is it that I can still speak for 15 minutes? Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to thank the members who have spoken, especially Dr. K.K. Kwok and Dr. Fernando Zhang. They used the majority of their 15 minutes to talk about the evils of smoking, um, premature death, and people getting sick, etc. I can only say I agree. Of course, we all know that smoking is bad. The order is not for us to discuss whether smoking is good or bad. Some members said that the 
coverage is proposed to be reduced. But no, I'd like to clarify. I am proposing for the 50% to be increased to 65%. So I'm not reducing it. But the administration is saying that they are increasing 50% to 85%. And Dr. Fernando Zhang is trying to increase 50% to 95%. This is the difference amongst the three proposals. Just now, Dr. Fernando Zhang said that as the CU report said, if you buy three packs of cigarettes every day, it would amount to $14 million. I would appeal to Hong Kong citizens who do not have $14 million yet. You should ask the member or his organization why they still do not have $14 million. To children who smoke, well, I won't support that at all, Mr. President. But as Mr. Ray Chan was saying, I think he, he made a very good point. The increase to 85%, but uh, we are only trying to reduce it to 65%, I think we'll still achieve the effect. In fact, this is what I have failed to understand because 85%, 75%, 65%, doesn't that make a difference in persuading people not to smoke? I have always asked the Bureau to give me some data, but they were not forthcoming. On the contrary, with Mr. Ray Chan said that um, on the last two occasions, there was an increase in the health warning, but in the end, there was a bigger smoking population, and that is why I'm seeking to amend the order. Miss Alice Mack mentioned that some tobacco companies told her that they were afraid that there was this expansion, but then and also expansion would not affect people who smoke, so they say there is a logical problem. Now, I'd like to say this clearly on behalf of the industry. The industry has said that expanding the warning would reduce the public's right to know because there will be less space for the trade name and also it will be easy for illicit cigarettes to be traded. That has always been the viewpoint. That is my viewpoint as well. As I said on the last occasion, if we increase the size of the warning, does it mean the bigger it is, the better it is? Well, it should be so in logic, but data-wise, that is not borne out. But the industry is talking about their trade name. Now it has to be so small it cannot be seen. And also counterfeit cigarettes and cigars would appear much more in the market. And I think we need to strike a balance. Some members mentioned tobacco duty that amounts to $4 billion a year that an organization told us that people who smoke are using social resources to the amount of $5.3 billion. I don't know whether that is an accurate figure or not. It is said that you get a tobacco duty to the tune of $4 billion, and yet it is not enough to cover the medical cost. What I want to say is, President, Hong Kong people just do not think uh, much or they do not care about such tobacco duty. Hong Kong people just want the majority of people not to smoke, including myself. But Hong Kong people's right of choice should be protected. And I'd like to emphasize this point. We should have mutual respect. Or else why don't you just go, out, go for an outright ban? You are increasing tobacco duty and you use these approaches in order to satisfy the WHO and to align with WHO standards. I definitely disagree. Either you follow all the guidelines, as I said, nicotine and tar uh, at WHO has said that these should not be labeled. Why do you still ask people to label this on the packets? The WHO says that it should be more than 50%. Dr. Pierre Chan 
said he would propose for plain packaging to be adopted. He is proposing plain packaging, but it is different from increasing the size of the warning. Um, but Dr. Chen, of course, is just making a proposal. He is not saying that that definitely should be the case. Some members mentioned other countries which are going to adopt plain packaging. Since I have time, I will say things about it. Um, Brunei, Canada, Laos, Myanmar, 75 percent, and then 65 percent. Austria, Belgium, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Denmark, uh, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Lithuania, and uh, Holland, Poland, and also Portugal and others. Sweden, Turkey, Brazil. They are doing this. And then they say, well, they will do more in future. But we don't have to run ahead of them every time. Why don't you follow European or, or American standards? Why do you follow extreme cases like Thailand? I think that is unreasonable. Lastly, Mr. President, I believe we'll vote on the order very soon, and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the Bureau or administration. We have different stances, but I have been communicating with the people at the Bureau, and in the end, you have accepted two points. So I said I would withdraw two proposals for amendments. And I'd like to thank the Bureau for this. And in the process, um, at public hearings, uh, people stated their own views. And I think it was an amicable process. This is what a democratic society should be like. We are all free to state our stances. And because of this, the Bureau has amended two of its proposals. I think this goes to show the function of this council. As those who support Dr. Fernando Zhang and friends of the democratic camp, I think that's all right. We are free to state our views. I hope Dr. Joseph Lee and uh, Dr. K.K. Kwok is not here, but I'd like to thank the two of them, because they chair um, a committee and also the subcommittee, you know they have different stances from me, but I think they have acted fairly in chairing meetings, despite uh, their different stand stances. I'd like to thank them. Lastly, I hope members, when you vote, will consider the worries of the business sector, particularly the tobacco industry, and uh, they are worried about the space for their trademark, and that it may be easier for counterfeit or illicit cigarettes to be traded in Hong Kong. Thank you, President. You and Dr. Fernando Chang, do you wish to speak again? Yes. President, I'd like to address what other members have said. Unfortunately, I do not know why Long Hair is not here, or else he would speak in support of the smokers for sure. I understand that smoking is not against the law. A lot of grassroots workers and um, people who have to work very hard might want to um, take a cigarette during a break. So um, it's a form of relief for them. But um, there is a price to pay, and um, I'm talking about the health impacts as well as the um, economic harms. If long hair is here, he would say that the government is being um, pretentious. We, um, the government receives $4 billion in tobacco duty every year, but has the money 
been invested back into、um, tobacco control or cost, or whether the enforcement of the tobacco control office has been stepped up, which would、um, discourage our young people from smoking. We are talking about four billion dollars. Well, um, Kosh and TCO are given about fifty million dollars a year, which is very limited. So, um, the government is not being sincere. Why aren't we putting in more resources on public education and tobacco control? Now you are trying to enlarge the graphic warnings. In order to、um, deter smokers, and、um, you are hoping that smokers will smoke less. And、um, I agree with the WHO that the ratio should be a hundred percent. But this alone is not enough, and、um, there's a lot more the government should do. Unfortunately, the government has not been active in its efforts. The four billion dollar worth of profit tax. Also、um, reveals how much tobacco companies are making. By simple math, if you、um, compare with the、um, 16% profit tax level, tobacco companies are making 25 billion dollars a year. So this is big business. So of course, they will stand against anything against、um, that would harm their business, and that's why I agree with. That's why I understand the Liberal Party's views. It's all about money, and、um, the money ends up with the big companies and the tobacco companies. For this、um, order, we want to enlarge the、um, ratio of health warnings on cigarette packs, and this would affect the、um, interests of the big guns, according to. A、um, latest UHK study: the economic cost is under、uh, the cost is 11.3 billion dollars per year, while, while tobacco companies are making 25 billions per year. That's why I said that the、um, health warnings should be at, as large as possible. Mr. Ray Chen made two points, and、um, I'd like to speak on those. The、um, government's efforts on tobacco control and liquor control are disproportionate. For、um, tobacco control, they are enhancing their efforts, and they have a lot of publicity against smoking. But in terms of liquor, it's the exact opposite. They provided waivers on the、um, liquor duties and red wine duties. But、um, liquor can have harmful health effects, and、um, drinking can lead to traffic accidents and casualties. And、um, however, I want to point out that tobacco and liquor are different. Tobacco is certainly harmful to health. There's some、um, quite some. Controversy on whether、um, liquor is harmful or beneficial. Some people say that liquor can actually benefit health, so、um, there is a difference between the both. When you smoke, a lot of people are affected by the secondhand smoke. If you consume liquor, at least other people would not be harmed, unless they are attacked by drunk people. Or if you、um, drink after dr if you drive after drinking, leading to casualties, this is another matter altogether. So in terms of liquor packaging, there should be、um, warnings. Liquor duty should be imposed. Why are your efforts so disproportional? The、um, well, long hair would say that you are hypocritical when you see this as a business. Well, of course it's all right, but、um, there are health hazards. But your efforts have not been proportionate. Mr. Ray Chan also said that no evidence、um, shows that more health warnings. 
um, would have an impact, and um, there's a lack of long-term study. Well, Mr. Wang Ting Kuang is um, notorious as a smoker, and he said that no matter how big the warnings are, he would not be affected. But in terms of public policy, you cannot just follow the um, views of a, a few individuals. You need to look at scientific evidence. You need to see whether studies have been conducted, and the answer is yes. I don't have much time to do research, but um, on the newspapers, I saw that Canada was the first country to um, introduce health warnings in 2001, and in 2002, they started a long-term study right until 2011. So the study lasted a whole 10 years, and um, they observed the um, trends over that over that over those 10 years. In terms of impacts of graphic health warnings on smokers or people who want to buy cigarettes, they observed that the um, health hazards went down by 30 percent, and and um, 50 percent less people wanted to pick up smoking. But um, in 2010, Canada amended its laws to increase the um, coverage of health warnings from 50% to 75%. And um, the um, deterrent effects also doubled after that amendment. They also worked on different sizes for the health warnings, including 70%, 90%, and 100%. They looked at adult and young smokers and non-smokers. They looked at the actual impacts, and they saw that they have been effective. And um, people were more um, aware of the impacts on health. And in terms of impact on the society, the um, enlarged health warning um, reduced the intention to pick up smoking, and it also encouraged smokers to quit. So um, such measures have been useful. And um, these countries have met opposition from tobacco countries in other countries, they have taken out litigations. One of the cases involved Philip Morris, um, who is the um, distributor of Marlboro cigarettes. They sued the um, Uruguay government, who increased the um, graphic wealth warning from 50% to 80%. Philip Morris sued the Ur Uruguayan government, saying that they have no evidence showing that enlarged graphic warnings can reduce the number of smokers. And um, Philip Morris thought that there was no evidence showing that, so um, that should not be done. They took the matter to international arbitration. It was um, handled at an international um, center of international disputes under the World Bank for disputes. So it's an um, international dispute resolution center or arbitration center. Last July, the case um, had a verdict, and Philip Morris um, lost the case. The reason was there was enough evidence showing that the larger the warnings, the larger the um, the greater the impacts of the health warning. And there was also an impact on the number of smokers. There's also an impact on whether young people would be would, would take up the habit. So we are talking about international um, examples. We are not making this all up. We are looking at international experience and how global bodies deal with such controversies. The um, 
and um, we are looking at how the, the WHO um, encourages some um, countries to take out different pra practices on tobacco control and cigarette packaging. I'm not a doctor. I've been. Um, I'm more interested about the welfare of the disadvantaged. Among the disadvantaged groups, there are a number of smokers. So I have uh, quite different views with people like Ray Chan and Long Hair. I think about public health. Um, money is a secondary consideration. The loss of productivity of or, or, or money are secondary. Health is always most important. If we know that smoking is harmful to health, why don't we do our best to um, reduce smoking? We would not ban smoking. Well, I, to be honest, I would support um, a smoking ban if it comes to that. But like Mr. Ray Chan said, everyone um, has different preferences or habits, and these preferences or habits, so long as they do not affect other people, even if they come with risks, people can choose to um, take up high risk activities, and um, we 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 shouldn't stop them. But smoking itself indeed would affect other people. Even if you try to contain smoking in public places, secondhand smoke still exists because we cannot ban all um, public places. So um, as long as smoking is still permitted, we have to still uh, we still have to allow them to smoke, and this would harm health. My amendment is unlikely to be passed because I know that the DAB would not support it. And um, among the um, Democrats, um, members also have different views. I hope that the government's amendment can be passed. And I believe that Mr. Peter Hsu's amendments would not be passed as well. I think the key is to reduce the number of smokers. I I'm not concerned about business. I'm more worried about health, especially the elderly. Some studies show that after years of smoking, by the time elderly people reach 65 or more, for every two of them, one smoker would lose their lives because of smoking. So this should not happen. That's why we should do our very best in enlarging the graphic warnings to 100%. In other words, adopting plain packaging. We we should adopt full warnings. It has been done in other countries. Four countries have implemented it, and um, a dozen more are working towards it by way of legislation. I hope the government would consider it carefully, and um, we have no more time to wait. After the 85% um, requirement is adopted, the government should prepare for plain packaging. Thank you. I now call upon the Secretary for Food and Health to reply that after the debate will come to a close, Secretary. Mr. President, before I respond to the uh, resolutions moved by members, I'd like to make a declaration and I would like to uh, clarify one point. As I have said, um, the proposal from the administration has the support of the subcommittee. And then many members have repeatedly said that for our proposal to enlarge the health warning, we have made reference to some examples like the countries of Thailand, uh, etc. Of course, other members have already uh, referred to them. Let me say this. In fact, in December 2012, Australia has opted for plain packaging. France, Ireland, New Zealand, etc. have already passed legislation 
in May 2016, uh, France has opted for plain packaging. I just want to clarify the uh, messages as to the few uh, resolutions moved by Mr. Sukafe. He would like to reduce the coverage of the health warning on package of retail containers of tobacco products to 65%. And in relation to the health warning on the um, retail containers for cigars um, to be reduced from 100% on the back and 70% on the front to 90% and 60% respectively. We do not support his proposals. As I have said, our proposal to enlarge the coverage of the health warning on the tobacco product packaging uh, was based on consideration of a local um, situation. Uh, the public since 2007 have been expecting um, tighter um, tobacco controls, and updating and enlarging the health warnings can keep the effect, and there is a need to enhance the effectiveness. According to international experience and evidence, um, the larger the size of the graphic health warning, the more effective it is. In Brazil, Canada, Singapore, and Thailand, um, studies have shown that the health warnings can significantly enhance public awareness. And in fact, um, um, it is wrong to say that there's no evidence. Um, and local surveys have indicated that the majority of the citizens uh, support clearer, uh, clearer uh, display uh, of the diseases to be caused by smoking, and we should make it uh, more sort of um, um, uh, should make it stronger. Now, I appreciate that Mr. Ray Chen has been very good at um, having a debate, but we're not having a debate competition. It is not a game. As I have said, internationally speaking, we have got a lot of evidence to say that the image is such that the larger, the stronger the effect. Of course, uh, sometimes within an image, um, part of it will be the core message, while the rest may be the background. If you say that um, we can afford to obscure a part of the image, especially the non-significant part, then we'll fall into a trap. It doesn't matter whether it should be 85% or 80%, and then the debate will see no end. Let's come back to the core of the matter. We should um, make sure that the larger the graphic health warning, uh, the stronger the effect. Mr. Xu has also referred um, to the need to lower the coverage of the health warning on cigar boxes and also the retail containers. We are aware of the different shapes and sizes of the um, retail containers of cigars. And having considered the concerns of the cigar industry, we have already changed uh, the requirements. Uh, that is, uh, instead of 85% across the board, it could be 100% on one of the largest servers and then 70% on the other uh, largest servers, except for containers um, carrying one stick of cigar. And we are providing sufficient room for the industry to carry out the require, uh, the the requirements. And uh, it also facilitates the attachment of authenticity seals and other labels. Um, we have also pointed out that, generally speaking, minor uh, departures uh, will not be uh, the subject matter of prosecution as a result of manual uh, processing. In fact, for plain packaging in Australia, um, they have also imposed the requirement on cigar boxes and retail containers. And they have also got strict uh, restrictions concerning the carrying of brand names, product names, and their restrictions on the ban on the display of logos, colors, promotional information, etc. We believe that our proposals concerning cigar boxes and con retail containers are about right. This is practical and feasible, and we can achieve the target of safeguarding public health and also making sure that the requirement is technically feasible. For Mr. Fernando Jung's uh, proposed uh, resolution, that is, the coverage 
uh, on the package of retail containers of cigarettes and tobacco uh, cigarettes, etc., uh, from 85% to 90%. And then for the cigar related uh, health warning, the coverage should be increased from 70% to 75%. In fact, we have been adopting a multi pronged and progressive approach when we launch our tobacco. Um, uh, uh, tobacco control. Our um, idea behind the proposed amendment has already taken into account the WHO advice and also the comments of the industry. And we have been following um, the views of the health services panel. Um, at this moment, I just want to say once again that I am grateful to some political parties, uh, including the, the Civic Party, as well as the Democratic Party and the Labour Party, for their support. Uh, other parties like the DAB and the FTU have also reflected the difficulties of the industry. They've always been doing that, and they have also accepted our amendments in response to their comments. For the Liberal Party, it is rather stubborn, but at the same time, they have also acknowledged our efforts. Um, some of our proposals have been ad adopted by them. In the light of the technical difficulties voiced by the industry, we have made adjustments so as to facilitate compliance. In relation to the uh, coverage uh, proposed, uh, we believe that um, it is pragmatic and appropriate, and the experience elsewhere has shown that it is going to work. So when some members have said that if the uh, remaining uh, space available is getting smaller and smaller for the purpose of showing the logo and brand names, etc. Well, overseas countries' experience have shown that it is workable, it is feasible. We will be assessing the effectiveness after the policy has been introduced, and we are going to monitor the local situation. I just want to point out, point out once again that on the part of the WHO, it has been promoting uh, print packaging throughout the world. And then in relation to Hong Kong government's uh, proposal to uh, enhance the coverage to 85%, WHO has written uh, to us to render its support. And you have also got a copy um, of that letter. I want to thank members for your input, um, all of you. Um, while uh, insisting on your um, views, uh, have also give priority to public health. It is a good uh, debate, and we are being uh, sort of pragmatic. I think this is the normal way that the legislature should function. And lastly, I have to admit that some members uh, have also um, talked about the uh, adequacies in our overall tobacco control policy. I agree that the government should um, evaluate our work and we should put in more efforts to um, make uh, improvements in all other areas of tobacco control. I hope members will support my uh, resolution. Why you I now put the question to you that the motion moved by the Secretary for Food and Health be passed. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of the members present. I declare the motion passed. Honorable Shu Fai, you may move your first motion. President, I move that my first motion, as set out in the appendix to the script, be passed. I propose the question to you that the first motion moved by Honorable Shu Fai be passed. Before I put to you the question on Shu Fai's first motion, I wish to remind members that if Shuka Fai's motion is passed, Dr. Fernando Chung may not move his motion, and the Honorable Shuka Fai may not move his second and third motions either. I now put the question to you that the first motion moved by Honorable Shuka Fai be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Doctors, uh, Mr. Shuka Fai, 
claims the division. The bell will ring for one minute, uh, five minutes.
Please proceed to vote. Members, please check your votes. If there is no question, voting is closed and the results are displayed. From G's, uh, FC's 28 present, 3 for 20 against, 4 abstentions. From GC's 27 present, 4 for 22 against, 1 abstention. The question is not agreed by a majority, respectively, of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion negatived. Ms. Tari Lee. President, I move that in the event of further divisions being claimed at this me meeting in respect of the Smoking Public Health Notices Order 2017, the bell should ring for one minute and a vote should be taken. I now propose the question to you, and that is that the motion moved by Ms. Dari Lee be passed. Does any member wish to speak? I put the question to you as stated. Were those in favor, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion passed. I order that in the event of further divisions being claimed at this meeting in respect of the Smoking Public Health Notices Order 2017, this council shall proceed to the vote after the bell has been rung for one minute. Dr. Fernando Zhang, you may move your motion. President, I move that the motion as set out in the appendix to the script be passed. I propose the question to you that the motion moved by Dr. Fernando Zhang be passed. Before I put to you the question on Dr. Fernando Zhang's motion, I wish to remind members that if Dr. Fernando Zhang's motion is passed, Shukar Fai may not move his second motion. I now put the question to you that the motion moved by Dr. Fernando Zhang be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Dr. Fernando Zhang claims a division. The bell will ring for one minute. Please proceed to vote. Members, please check your votes. If there is no question, voting is closed and the results are displayed. From FC's 28 present, 7 for 19 against, 1 abstention. From GC's 27 present, 7 for 20 against, no abstention. The question is not agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion negatived. Honorable Shukafa, you may move your second motion. President, I move that the second motion is set out in the appendix to the script be passed. I propose the question to you that the second motion moved by Honorable Shukafa be passed. I now put the question to you as sta stated. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Honorable Shukafa claims a division. The bell will ring for one minute.
開始表決。Please proceed to vote. 開始表。Please proceed to vote. Members, please check your vote. If there is no question, voting is closed and the results are displayed. From FCs 28 present, 3 4 20 against, 4 abstentions. From GCs 27 present, 4 4 22 against, 1 abstention. The question is not agreed by a Majority of each of the two groups of members present, I declare the motion negatived. On, members' motions.